Hey guys, um, I just went to the Frankenstein comic book swap, and I gotta say, well, I only had like 30, 40 minutes to spend there, and um, it was super packed with people, but I gotta say, I wasn't thrilled. I bought, <laughs> I bought a lot of comics, but I wasn't that thrilled by what I bought, or by the prices I saw and stuff. Um... A lot of really scruffy comics going for a dollar a piece that maybe should have been twenty five cents. There was there was one person selling three for a dollar, and they were you know really beat up unwanted comics. Um, I felt like if you know there's some stores with fifty cent bins around Portland that I could have got much better stuff at in many cases. Um, but I was there. You pay a dollar to get in, and I just kind of wanted to get some comics. I did get some stuff that I'm kind of psyched about, but, um, like, uh, this Submariner from 19, uh, number 68. I hope it's, I don't know, maybe it's a re reprint in here. I don't know. This was a dollar, um, and it's, it's not in very good shape, but of course it's, it's, uh, 30 or 40 years old. Oh, I guess it's not a reprint. It's uh, Steve Gerber and Don Hack. That might be interesting. I didn't know Steve Gerber ever wrote Submariner. And that that was uh, 68. Here's 46. But I uh, I picked it up. So this was a dollar also. Picked it up rather hastily. Didn't see how chewed up it was. These aren't the, these aren't the worst deals that I got or a worst beat up comics I got. I think. Um, let's see who did this. Gary Conway and Gene Colan, but it's kind of becoming detached. The cover's becoming detached, plus it's all chewed up. I don't know, maybe, it's probably still worth a dollar to me. And um, <clears throat> this issue of The Hulk, I'm not sure if I already have it. I remember this issue very fondly from my youth. So in the rush, I just thought, well, I'll just grab that. But yeah, I, the crowds made it hard for me to think. It was sometimes hard to reach the comics. And then, I guess, to be cool, they blast some really loud hard rock there. And I'm totally a heavy metal hard rock fan. But I, it wasn't a song I was familiar with, or wasn't music I was familiar with. And it just, in general, made me kind of more... Between that and the crowds and <clears throat> so much stuff to choose from. This is kind of classic Herb Trimp era. It's really, really beat up. I guess, you know, for a dollar, what do you expect? But then, for instance, I got this from a $2 bin. And it was it was from my shop owner. So he was talking to me, so I felt like I needed to look through. But most of the stuff there in the $2 bin, I think, will end up in... Because it was a new collection he said he'd bought, and he hadn't priced it yet. Most of it was going to end up in his dollar bin, which I get for 50 cents for being one of his uh, pull box customers. And when he has a sale, they become 25 cent comics. Now, this he might price a little higher. This is a one of those infamous Atlas comics. I don't know if there was more than one issue of this Blazing Battle Tales. And uh, I had enough motivation to get that because I'm trying to get all the Atlas comics and I don't think I have this one. It was too crazily crowded to go looking up things up on my CLZ app. Then um, I think I got these out of the three for the dollar, three for a dollar. So that was not bad. I already have all the issues of Warp, but I'm thinking if I can get a complete second collection, I might get it bound, you know, the custom bound. Um, although I think it may now have come out in a trade briefly, but still I kind of like the idea of, of doing it as a custom bound thing. So I just got these random issues of Warp and I'll try to collect a, a second run of the issues since it's not... It's probably just enough to make a fat trade. Issue number 18. Then I grabbed some Star Slayer. It might be fun to do the same with Star Slayer and get a custom bound because you can always find Star Slayer really cheap. This is probably from after, um, unfortunately, after Mike Grell left it. So I think we're looking... So everything at this place that had th th uh, three comics for a dollar was unbagged. And... Um, but it seems in okay shape, kind of musty smelling. But um, so yeah, got two of these Star Slayers. I got ended up getting once you know it's three for a dollar, start picking out a lot. I ended up getting seven dollars worth. Here's an old Captain Canuck. It's pretty beat up, but um, I don't see these too often. 
I may have had this issue in the 80s. I was kind of a fan of the early Captain Canuck in the 80s, uh, mostly because of the artist. What's his name? Yeah, George Freeman. I was quite the George Freeman fan. I think I've discussed that with a few of you guys out there over the years. Um, I don't think I have this Hammer of God, which would be a side... A, a mini side thing from back in the first comics days of um, Nexus. Just the covers by Steve by Steve Rude, or maybe only just maybe these are not covers by Steve Rude. They look kind of Steve Rudeish, but they aren't. So this is uh, three and four of Hammer of God. Again, I didn't check my app, but I don't think I already have these, so I have to look for the other two. And I've had an urge just to... I w remember reading Prime. I kind of had fun with the Ultraverse for a while, the Malibu Comics Ultraverse, back in the early 90s. Um, so I thought I'd dip into some of those. I remember liking Prime, which was kind of a Shazam, Superman, done 90s style kind of thing, um, where a teenage boy becomes this over-muscularized superhero. Written by Jones. Is it Bruce Jones? A writer I've often liked. Um, Jared Jones. Oh, he's the guy who's gone to jail for child molesting, I think. Is that him? Or am I confusing him with someone else? Um, this one is a Steve Englehart book, The Nightman. Uh, so it might... I'll... I think I've collected a few other Nightmen. I remember reading that back when. I don't know if, if it's good Steve Englehart or not. I may already have this rune, but again, for 33 cents, a little more Barry Windsor Smith. Unfortunately, the coloring at this point at Malibu Comics sometimes obscured Smith's art. Let's see. But, um, did Windsor Smith also write, or they just put his name first anyway? Written by Windsor Smith and Chris Ulm, drawn by Windsor Smith. And as I've said in a recent, recently, Windsor Smith turned out, Barry Windsor Smith turned out to be a good writer. Um, wish he'd written more comics. Warp, he wrote Archer and Armstrong most famously for me. Another Warp, um, still with Frank Brunner on it. Or no, Mike on the inside. Frank Brunner did pencils and yeah. And Mike Gustavich did inks. And... Some of you guys might not have seen me talk about Warp years ago. It was a musical, a science fiction hippie musical that w briefly went to Broadway with designs by Neil Adams, but failed on Broadway, but got turned into a comic book. I have no idea what this is, but I couldn't resist Mad Dog from Blackthorn Publishing. Oh, Blackthorn, I think they're still around, are they? A little bit? This is definitely uh, semi-pro at best. More Warp. Cool cover by Frank Brunner. I wonder what Frank Brunner did after Warp. I guess he left Marvel, was doing Warp. Did he come back to comics ever, or did, was that it? An Elric comic that I may or may not have. Again, you're making quick choices. Beautiful artwork here. Um, I assume P. Craig Russell. P. Craig Russell and Mike, Michael Gilbert. The coloring's a bit odd, but they were trying to do something different than normal comic book coloring at the time. This would be the 80s, I assume. A copy of Secret Origins. I may or may not have this. I really like Shadow Last, so I may have picked this up out of a 50 cent bin in the past. You know, now that I'm looking at these, these aren't such bad choices from that three for a dollar. That one was super crowded. I could have spent even longer there, but I just... I was running out of time. Speaking of time, I don't know what time it is. So Peacemaker number one, I might already have this. I don't know. And wasn't Peacemaker like a uh, Charl Charlton character? Or Gold Key or something? Something that, uh, that DC bought. Another Ultraverse Prime number eight. Also has some, apparently has some Walt Simonson inside. What if Ultraverse had not been bought by Marvel? Would it have kept going and would it have evolved into something interesting? 
I think it was a little more writer driven than Image Comics, so I, I liked it for that. Oh, these are really beat up, but I couldn't resist some Harvey comics. I got hot stuff. Wendy the Good Little Witch. Love both those characters. Little, Aud Little Audrey and Melvin. I'm not such a fan of Little Audrey, but I thought I, Audrey, but I think my daughter likes him. Her, so I got that. Okay, now here are ones that I don't know if I made good purchases or not. These were half off the cover price. I just grabbed a bunch of Captain Marvels. This one probably, I mean, $4, so $2. But um, was it worth paying $5 for this? I don't know. Um, that's Captain Marvel number eight. I love this cover here, so I grabbed that, but that was uh, four fifty, half of nine, uh, Captain Marvel number 15. Great Gil Kane, classic kind of Gil Kane cover here, number number 21. I hope Gil Kane art is on the inside. Sometimes there is some Gil Kane on Captain Marvel. I know I had this comic when I was 11 or 12 years old, and I loved this cover. I can't remember what's on the inside, whether it was disappointed me or was great stuff. Here's another, more Gil Kane. Um, I might have had this one as a kid, too. Though there's so many Gil Kane covers with a girl who looked like this. I love that kind of 70s belt there. <laughs> That's Captain Marvel 23. Here's 24. That cover looks very similar to the cover where he's fighting the Hulk, doesn't it? No, I guess not. But anyway. Cool. Love these Gil Kane covers. I paid a dollar for this. Totally beat up World's Finest, but I thought it would make a fun reader copy with my daughter. Um, got Robin and Jimmy Olsen being tortured by Superman. <laughs> And this totally beat up, but really creepy cover for House of Secrets. House of Secrets number 123. I'm, I'm positive I don't have this one. I don't recognize that cover. Let's see. Okay, now here's a bunch of Doctor Stranges that I bought for $2 a piece. And I don't know if that was a good price or not. They look pretty beat up. Um, it was 10 for $2. Or, sorry, 10 for $20. So I bought 10 of them. Um, number three, Doctor Strange number three. That looks like Frank Brunner cover. Another Frank Brunner cover on number five. I gambled on trying to remember which ones I didn't have because, again, I didn't feel like looking at my app. Doctor Strange number seven. Boy, that almost looks like Ernie Cullen... I mean, um, Ernie Chan, maybe, or Ernie Chan inking someone else, maybe John Romita on the cover. There's a um, Gil Kane cover with a different kind of inker. I'd almost guess that's like Claus Jansen or Dick Giordano inking it. Maybe my CLZ app will tell me once I put them in. Gene Colan cover. Gene Cullen did a lot of Doctor Strange, I believe. Not sure whether Steve Englehart was still writing it or someone else took over. Oh, I may have this one, or I had it as a kid. It looks very familiar. Oh, well. Number 12. And number 15. Definitely a Gene Cullen cover. Reminds me of his Dracula art there. The Devil's Workshop. And number 16, more Gene Colon. They, uh, they didn't use Gene Colon on the covers as much as some other artists. I'm not sure if they didn't think he was as good of a cover artist as Gil Kane and the like. Number 17, but um, I like these covers. They are a bit harder to parse visually than, say, a Gil Kane cover or a Frank Brenner cover. Um, this one says, colon inked by Milgram. That's interesting. Are these other colon one side, I don't see anything. So maybe, maybe it was Milgram's idea to actually sign it. So last but not least. So 
In a previous haul, I said I had now collected my epic collection, Epic Illustrated from 80s Marvel, the creator-owned magazine that was, you know, I guess designed to compete with Heavy Metal, but maybe also with Eclipse magazine and the burgeoning indie comics of the 80s. Um, but when I looked on my CLZ app, it said I didn't have number one. I, I could swear I have this, but I just bought another copy anyway, just in case, because I don't see it that often. Um, and I got this one for $7. It was half off the price there. Most epics I tend to buy have bought for $5 a piece, but yeah, so number one. Hopefully it's in okay shape. It's Frank Frazetta. I didn't realize that was a Frank Frazetta painting on epic number one. I don't know if it's original or reprinted from some previous place where so much of Frank Frazetta's paintings will start in one place and get reprinted elsewhere. You never know when you're getting the first copy. So, you know, I think if I were to go to the Frankenstein comic swap again, I don't know. It would make sense to give myself more time and check out everything that's there first and then circle back. Although that would be hard if it's as crowded as it was today. I may have arrived at the peak time too. So I guess there's, there also could be argued you could arrive late and people might be slashing their prices. It's also a place where <clears throat> clearly you could try to bargain with people. Um, but I'm, especially when I'm in a rush, but just generally I'm not a person who enjoys bargaining. So I tend to like to just look for a price I'm willing to pay and go with that. But, you know, I probably, like with those Doctor Stranges, the guy practically said, oh, we could make a bargain. So I might have been able to grab a few more Doctor Stranges and said, could I get these 12 for a dollar instead of these 10 or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what, I'm never quite sure what the limits of bargaining are. Okay, well, that'll do me for now. I'll talk to you all later. I'm going to get married.